Hey and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, what we're going to do is actually look at how we can use SF symbols in Swift UI and also discuss what they are as well. So let's jump straight into the video. So just before we get started, so SF symbols is basically a library of iconography that was actually designed by Apple. So basically these symbols are Apple's own icons that we can use for free within our iOS applications. Now, if you're someone who's built your own app, Finding a consistent icon set it can be very difficult um, and especially one that kind of matches with iOS's you know general theme and design which is why for me personally SF symbols is the way forward for any kind of icons that you want to use within your app because it helps you know align your app with the iOS you know platform and ecosystem. So in order to get these SF symbols, what you need to do is you actually need to go onto the Apple developer site and actually search for SF symbols. And when you go onto the website, you should see a page that looks like this. And if you actually scroll down, you should actually see a link which allows you to actually download SF symbols um, app, so the 3.2 version. Now, it's worth noting that this SF symbols app is not on the Mac App Store. I don't know why, um, but... Um, in order to use it, you just have to basically download it from the website. So once you finish downloading this and installing it onto your machine, so you should see the application open up and look like this. So on the left hand side, you'll notice that you have a bunch of different categories that you can use to find all the symbols or they're broken down into like new symbols, also multicolor, weather, whichever kind of category you're looking for. And you can also actually build your own custom symbols and they will actually appear here as well. It's also worth noting as well that in the toolbar, you can actually customize the font and the weight of your SF symbols too. So at the option here, you'll see that you have SF Pro. If we wanted to, we could actually choose SF Pro rounded and actually change the font of our SF symbols. And if we wanted to, we could actually change the weight of it as well. So if we actually go all the way down to ultra light, you will notice that our symbols now look like an ultra light version. Or alternatively, if we went to something like black, which is super heavy, you'll see that our symbols are way heavier than they were before. But let's just go in between and just go for medium. Okay, cool. So this is really useful because it actually allows you to actually preview your, you know, icons before you actually add them into your SwiftUI app. So you're not really second guessing like how this is going to look in your application. So another thing you can do is you can actually view the symbols in a different kind of layout. So we have a grid layout here. We have like a list layout here and you also have like a blown up version with like, um, icons at the bottom so you can view them all here and select them. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to look at how we can add in an SF symbol within um, Swift UI. So let's do that now. So if you just go to Xcode, if you have an Xcode project open, um, all you need to do is use an image. So I'm just going to reduce this to create some more space and just let this build. Rather than just having a text on the screen, what I don't want to do is I actually want to choose an image from SF symbols and put it in here. Now, in order to do that, all I need to do is actually let's delete this and then just use image like so. An image has a parameter called system name like so. So now when we actually type this out, you'll notice that there's actually nothing showing up on the screen. And the reason why that is, is because we've not actually typed in a valid system name for the SF symbol. So let's go back to our SF symbols app and in the search field on the top right hand corner, I'm just going to search for cloud sun. Cool. So we should notice that we have a cloud sun here. And what you could do if you wanted to, you could actually type this out if you wanted to. So cloud.sun. But rather than me doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just copy the name of it and then simply just paste it within the image like so. So now, so now, as you can see, it's on our screen, but if you notice, it's actually very small. So how can we actually change the size of this FF symbol? Well, like I said at the start, SF symbols are iconography, so we can actually treat them like we would with some text and a font. So if we actually use the actual font modifier, we're actually able to change the size of the SF symbol and also the weight as well. So let's do that now. So on the image, I'm going to apply a font size of 50 and a weight of bold. Now you can see that we've actually 
um, increase the size of our image and we've also changed the font of it as well and if you want to learn more about modifiers and what they are in SwiftUI you can actually check out my videos breaking down SwiftUI and getting started with Xcode for SwiftUI but what about if we actually want to change the color of our SF symbol in our image well similarly again because this is a font all we need to do is just literally add a foreground color onto our view so underneath the font what we're going to do is we're going to say foreground color dot blue okay cool so what this will allow us to do now is it allows us to style our image so we can actually change the color to something like red as well if you wanted to and our symbol picks up the color I don't know if you noticed this, but if we just go back to the SF symbol application, our symbols actually have two versions of themselves sometimes. So you'll see here that we have cloud.sun and we also have cloud.sun.fill. So these are actually two alternative versions of the same SF symbol. Now, what we could do is if we wanted to use the alternative version where it's using dot fill, we actually could just literally just change the text here to dot fill like so. And you'll notice that it actually automatically, you know, updates it for us. But starting with iOS 15, if your application supports iOS 15 only, we can actually use a new modifier called symbol variant. So let's use that now. So if we delete the fill from the string. Underneath the foreground color, we can actually say dot symbol variant. And we can actually add in dot fill like so. And now you'll see that it actually picks up. Alternatively, sometimes what you can have is you could actually have an SF symbol next to some text. And this can be done using a component called label. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just type out the um, label now. And I'm going to just show you um, it in a VStack and then we'll add the modifiers onto them individually. So let me just type this out now. So before we get started, one thing I just want to make note of is notice how on the actual VStack I've actually applied the modifiers onto the VStack and all the children within that VStack have actually inherited the styles that I've defined. So they've all inherited the font and the foreground color on them. Now, in this case, what I want to show you is how we can actually scale an image within a label. So scale an actual SF symbol without affecting the text within it as well. So in order to actually scale an image and within, so in order to actually scale the SF symbol within a label, all we need to use is the image scale modifier. So let's do that now. So if I just say dot image scale small, you should notice that my text has stayed the same. My SF symbol has gotten smaller. So we can actually see all the possible sizes that we can use for our image scale. Again, by just simply holding down the command key on our keyboard and selecting small, and then going to jump to definition. And this will show us all the possible sizes that we have. So the enum, has a small, medium, and a large, like so. Alternatively as well, what you could do is actually just Google image scale and then view this in the Apple documentation as well. But I'm just doing it because we're directly in Xcode. We can just see it there and then. So now let's see what our image looks like when we apply a medium and large onto it to see the differences. So if we actually look at it from the changes that we've now applied, it seems that medium is the default for SF symbols and labels. But you can see here that as we go larger in size from small, medium, large, text for the label is the same, but the size of the SF symbol is different. So there's one last topic that I just wanna cover before we wrap up on this video, and that's called symbol rendering. So if we just go back into our SF symbols um, application, you might notice here on the utility panel that we actually have um, two tab open here. You notice here that if we actually select our fill option, it actually tells us on the information, the availability is monochrome, hierarchical, palette, and multicolor. So what is this? So these are the four different rendering modes that you could actually get for this symbol if you want to display it in you know four different styles. So if you actually want to preview these styles, um, SF Symbols makes this really easy for you. So all you need to do is actually just hit the paintbrush button here on the right hand side. And as of right now, the rendering mode by default is monochrome. 
So what monochrome means is that this is just one single color, basically. So everything is the same color. And the other mode we have is hierarchical. So hierarchical applies like a gray effect onto it. You can see here that it's like white, but the main primary color is like grayed out. We also have palette, which allows us to choose what color we want to apply. So in this case, we have a primary color of white and we also have a accent color of blue. So what I could do is I want, I could say I want my cloud here to be purple and I want the accent color for that to be yellow. I can see how I've got the purple and yellow for my um, SF symbol here, like so. And then finally as well, what we could do if we wanted to is we could actually choose a multicolor. So multicolor, what that will do is it'll actually just render certain specific SF symbols with the multicolor styles that Apple has defined. So these are style, these are colors that we've not defined. This is actually something that Apple has provided for us. So multicolor SF symbols. And as you can see, not every single symbol has a multicolor style. So you can just define the color that you want by default if it doesn't already um, support it. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to see how we can apply these rendering modes within our images in Swift UI. So let's just go back here. Rather than having our label like we did before, let's actually edit this and actually just revert this back to what it was before where it was all a list of images. So what I've done is I've added a V stack onto the screen here and I've also added um, four images so we can see our four different you know rendering modes i've added some padding onto the v stack so you can see the padding around it and i've added a background color of mint so we can just clearly see the ss symbol against different colors that we're going to apply onto it and i've just added a font style of bold onto it as well so what we're going to do now for our first one is we're just going to see what it looks like when we add the monochrome um, rendering mode onto it so in order to do this, what you need to do is actually type out symbol rendering mode like so. And then you just simply want to type dot monochrome. And as you can see here, our first symbol doesn't really have like any, you know, multiple colors. It just literally takes on the one color, which by default here is black. So if I even if I was to give it a foreground color of, let's say, dot um, red, you'll see that it only takes on the color of dot red. So you can't actually specify any uh, multiple colors. So the next rendering mode that we had was multicolor. So let's do that now. You may notice that with the second one, when we actually type in multicolor, nothing actually happens. And the reason why that is, is because we go back to SF symbols and we go back to our cloud.sun, you'll notice that it doesn't actually support multicolor. The one that does support multicolor is cloud.sun.fill. So in order to actually see this in action, what we're going to need to do is actually apply a symbol variant of fill onto this image. So let's just apply that onto all of them. So we're just going to say symbol variant dot fill. If you're someone who's using iOS 13 or 14 and you can't use this modifier, then you just want to add dot fill onto all the strings like so. So now you can see that our second option, which is using multicolor, is using Apple's, you know, system multicolor that they've defined for us. So we get this nice multicolor. Now the next one that we want to specify for symbol rendering mode is hierarchical. So let's do that now. And you'll notice now that the sun has almost like grayed out for us. So we get this grayed out effect when we're using hierarchical. And then the last style that we want to apply is palette. So when you use palette, you'll notice that nothing actually happens. And in order to actually see something happening, what you're going to need to do is actually specify the primary and the accent color that you want to use in a list. So what we need to do is actually specify the foreground style. So let's go to foreground style. And then in foreground style, we need to actually apply a list of colors that we want. So I'm going to say that I want the primary to be red and I want the accent to be blue for oh, now our primary color for this so the cloud is red and our accent color is blue so now we can specify you know the two colors that we want to apply and customize our sf symbols sweet 
So we pretty much covered everything that you need to know when working with SF symbols. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd really love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you liked it, then you can give the video a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that as well. If you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.